the museum building was constructed in 1860 in the Gothic Revival style, and was originally built to serve as a Methodist Episcopal Church. In 1906, the church and its property were purchased by the families of the Degays, the Egberts, and the Voorhees, local residents of West Milford. In 1910, the property owners deeded the church and its property to the township of West Milford for use solely by the community. In 1912, the building began its service to the township when it became West Milford's first town hall in the center of West Milford. The building remained the town hall until 1958 when the present municipal building was constructed on farmland directly across on Union Valley Road. From 1958 until 1987, the museum building functioned as the Town Hall Annex. During the 1980s, the township started the process of designating the building as a local historical landmark, and also as the site of the proposed West Milford Township Museum. In 2000, following extensive renovations, the museum was open to the public. Serving the township residents in many ways for 150 years, the building continues its service to the community, chronicling the vast history of this region. I belonged to the Heritage Quilters in 1988. 1989, they had hoped to use this building as a place to hold the Heritage Quilters meetings and have quilting bees and, and have quilt shows and so on. So they asked someone in the Quilters to go to a meeting and find out when this building was going to get renovated so we would know when we could plan to start holding our meetings there. I went to the first Heritage Committee meeting and when I left there I thought I couldn't imagine why we didn't have hundreds of people wanting to be on this committee because I thought just having an opportunity to be able to be part of a renovation of a building and set it up as a museum of local history, I thought it was such a wonderful opportunity. So I joined the committee in 1989 and then shortly thereafter they um, voted me as chairperson. and. I still belong to the Heritage Quilters, but uh, my focus was, I was trying to work between the, both uh, organizations. Uh, ultimately though, was the goal to get this building renovated and get it open as a museum. We've always tried to get students, the scouts, um, the seniors involved in coming to the museum, working at the museum, learning um, about the history of the township uh, because we always thought that was so important. And we were very uh, grateful that the school wrote into their curriculum for the third graders to come to a, on a tour of the museum and learn about local history each year. So um, we host the children from all the different schools, and there are six elementary schools in West Milford. So that's 200 plus students that we get through here. Um, and we try to explain a little bit about the West Milford history, the history of West Milford, um, and some of the things that were important in West Milford. All kinds of artifacts from uh, the 1800s all the way up into the uh, 1900s and even a few of the, they go into the 2000 era. Uh, these are gathered and uh, as time goes on, what is new today will be an artifact tomorrow. It's part of history tomorrow. And that's the way that the museum will keep going and climbing, hopefully, becoming an institute of, of the history of this township. Probably number one favorite is the jungle habitat. Uh, number two is the uh, ice machine and the ice age tools. And number three is the mining, about the mines and the iron ore, and that uh, facet of it. 
And it goes on down from there, different, uh, the different exhibitions. The West Milford Museum has an assortment of artifacts and documents that represent the history of West Milford uh, and the region. Uh, some of the ex exhibits that we have, one of the most important exhibits, I feel, is the quilt behind me, which represents different areas of West Milford and various historic sites. This was a quilt made by the West Milford Heritage Quilters. It took about 12 years to make, so we started gathering ideas and we took photographs of different sites and then reconstructed the same scene in fabric and then we placed them on the quilt and of course um, went through the whole process of creating this beautiful quilt that's behind me now. Schoolhouse reminds me a lot of, uh, I went to Newfoundland School, which now is the uh, grasshopper on Route 23 South there in Newfoundland. And uh, that was a three room school when I attended it. We had one teacher for three grades in each room. And uh, our settings here that you see in the background is similar to in many ways to what was there. And the bell that I used to ring when I was in the seventh and eighth grade is also uh, shown. And uh, it, it reminds me of the old school. We often have people that visit the museum who remember visiting the habitat or who had worked at the jungle habitat and they often tell us the different stories and things that they remember. So that's nice that we have people coming in and they can reminisce about something that I don't really know if anyone else has as many uh, artifacts that we have uh, for the jungle habitat. Another important exhibit is the Cropsey exhibit. Uh, we have prints that were donated by the Newington Cropsey Foundation. Jasper Francis Cropsey was uh, one of the Hudson River School artists, and he had come to West Milford back in the 1840s to um, get healthy, to recoup from some of his childhood illnesses, and he used to sketch and paint in West Milford, especially by Greenwood Lake. By keeping the history of the town before the museum, there was no uh, centralized point where you could go and find the history of the town. We certainly hope there's hope for the future. Uh, that's what our intention is, to gradually keep adding to the artifacts and uh, building as time goes on, building up the history that, like I said before, is, repeats itself, or history, uh, what is here today is history tomorrow, so there will always be history coming behind us. We're a very small, I guess you would say, um, country-style museum. My, my dream would be not to have to work every day and to be able to be at the museum and have the museum open, if not every day, at least five days a week. Uh, that is my goal and that is my dream. I'm hoping someday when I retire that I'll be able to do that dream.